Thanks so much for having me, you guys. Appreciate the introduction, Werner. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I titled this Laser Spire and Robots. Uh, really, this is a, a, you know, a story about um, sort of imagination, creativity, and uh, uh, you know, sort of following your passion. So, uh, I'm a nerd. I imagine many of you are nerds. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I started out as a nerd, and, and you know, as me as, a, as, as an eight-year-old, you know, nerds generally, you sort of always got the tools that you need with you. Uh, so for me, as an eight-year-old, you know, that was like toys and stuffed animals. But you know, as, as, you, as you move on, those tools start to get more complex, more interesting. Uh, I ended up as an engineer at, uh, at, at UCLA, uh, which I liked quite a lot. Of course, I never graduated, but managed to hire all my favorite uh, co-workers in, in uh, one of my first startups. Uh, but uh, you know, ended up in all sorts of different stuff. I worked in DNA synthesis and fiber optics, and as a systems administrator, and uh, even as a sushi chef for a little while. But didn't <laughs> very weird experience. Uh, uh, but you know, the the it, it didn't really sort of find what I loved and what I was really having a ball with until I uh, started collaborating with my co-founder Eric Gradman. Uh, and and he's a clown. Uh, I'm I'm actually a clown. Uh, we're, uh, and uh, we're, we, uh, his his background was robotics or is robotics. And we you know wanted some, we were both very frustrated what we were doing. I was working on a on a failing startup. We had put. Uh, touch screens on all the tables of a restaurant, uh, uh, displays on all the walls. You could order all your food from the screens and play games against that, everyone. Uh, and what was that? Yeah, you know what? We uh, that they launched just like maybe a year or so after we did, and and sad. So there was was I could go really down the rabbit hole with you on this, uh, but, <laughs> but uh, you know we spent really a lot of time and money building an iPad. Uh, so we we were about five years too early. Uh, so you know timing, opportunity, preparation. You guys probably learn all about that. Uh, but uh, and so and he was he was working at a big think tank in in LA building robots for the military. Pretty sure he was uh, uh, facilitating you know killing people. Uh, and so we were both sort of like meh with like our normal lives uh, and started to uh, collaborate in 2007 making interactive art. And you know, it was a really special time for tech. Computer vision was getting cheap, sensors were getting easy to use, you know, the sensors that make your iPhone possible had gone from thousands of dollars to you know, less than 10. Uh, uh, you know, if you think about the, the camera in a Kinect, right? That was a $10,000 camera before it was 100 bucks. So there was this sort of really awesome confluence of, of opportunity to be able to really make something awesome in a weekend. Uh, so we started doing just that, and uh, our first thing was this interactive whiteboard. Uh, we basically pointed a camera and a projector at a whiteboard. The camera would pick up the state of what you were drawing. The projector would project a physics simulation, would sort of bounce off the stuff you were drawing. Super simple, fun. We took it to a party, and people liked it. They, you know, they started making games out of it, and and. Uh, uh, so we were like, all right, our confidence was bolstered. This was fun. We picked, kicked this out in you know eight hours. Uh, let's start making more stuff. And we challenged ourselves to make something new every single month. Uh, so our next thing was this sort of as close as we got to an arcade cabinet was this six-player game table. And and my favorite part about this is these are lame graphics, right? There's six colors in this thing. It's a really simple game, but it didn't matter. Uh, you know, people come to parties in twos and fours. Six kind of guaranteed you were meeting somebody new around the table, and, and we took this back to this one event over and over again. People started coming up saying, the only way I meet new people is around your hexacade. We were like, wow, cool, no way. You know, and, and, and it, this was not Halo. Decidedly, you know, super simple, and yet that was, that, that was enough. Uh, equivalently, uh, you know, we filled a room with fog and laser beams. And you know, my favorite part about this is, Everybody knows what to do in a room of laser beams, right? You know, it's like you don't have to do anything. You know, yeah, it's like it doesn't matter what you're wearing. You know, cocktail attire, high heels, whatever. People commando rolling across the floor, uh, super fun. But uh, you know, not all of the you can't. You know, you throw a bunch of stuff against the wall, and it doesn't always all work. Uh, uh, we we thought, okay, rock band, totally awesome. Space battle, totally awesome. Rock band for space battle is gonna be great. It's a sure thing. So we, we literally spend a whole month building this entire 3D world, two big project, you know, two ships, gunner, navigator, pilot on one ship, gunner, navigator, pilot, another ship, three computers, 3D world, multiple displays, all this kind of stuff. People sat down to it and they were like, huh? You know, and, and, and we, we were like, God, you know, we thought this was gonna be so amazing. And, and, and since then, we've sort of started to joke that the things that we're the most excited about are probably gonna totally suck. And it's the stuff that we just sort of throw out the door that, that ends up being awesome. Like a wall of buttons, right? Like this is, you wouldn't think that there is a lot of opportunity for fun. We're on like the seventh version of this. And I'll, I'll sort of come back to, you, uh, uh, to this a little bit later. But remember, this was sort of the earliest version that we did for a, uh, a big hotel up in, in, in Seattle. Uh, uh, this sort of m m series of interactive rooms. 
but uh, this thing transitioned into a multiplayer game and all sorts of fun, but, but just remember this, I'll come back to it. Uh, one of my favorites is our dunk tank flambe. You remember the old dunk tank where you throw a ball and you fall in water? We were like, water's all right, but fire is so much cooler. Uh, and so uh, you're, you are wearing a fire suit so you don't die, uh, but, but you know, literally someone hits the ball and, and you're enveloped in that flame. I'm, I think I have a, <laughs> this is a, a really quick video from, uh, from our last big event here. This is my co-founder uh, going into this thing. He's got a GoPro wrapped in fire retardant cloth and uh, some little kid's gonna try to throw that, hit that target. Oh, he missed. Eric's doing a good job of taunting him. <laughs> and then <laughs> connects. Oh my god. I just can't believe that. Uh, so I, I, I just love that, and you know, you, you know, we we we're a bunch of nerds. So we do it, you know, we do it by the book. We get the you know the fire marshal out there, and the thing that I've just loved, fire marshals, firemen, they're all total pyros. I mean, they just love it. The fire marshal was there the whole time. His daughter's throwing the ball. Like it's it, it's hilarious to sort of watch them interact. Uh, so. Uh, uh, maybe about 2011, uh, uh, this rock band finds out about this big band of nerds in downtown LA, and they're like, hey guys, like, we'd love your help with uh, our next project. Uh, we want to be able to dance with a machine in our, in, our next, uh, in our next music video. And we all sort of like scratched our heads a little bit. We're like, dance with a machine? God, what are we going to do? What about a Rube Goldberg machine? You know, the things where like the ball rolls down a ramp and hits a cat and the cat pops a balloon. It's sort of the, those big whimsical crazy machines. So we thought, what if we do a Rube Goldberg machine and instead of dancing with it, it's gonna abuse you a little bit. Are you guys all right with that? And they were like, yeah, sure, that sounds great. So uh, if, if you know the, the, the rock band OK Go, the guys who did like danced on the treadmill and stuff. So it, it, we, we did that, it started with this uh, and then it ended like this. And, and over the course of it, it was like two huge, uh, uh, it was like two huge floors, like a 20,000 square foot warehouse. And we dropped pianos and smashed televisions and this whole sort of massive thing that took us three months to build and was a total nightmare. I mean, literally, the fact that those things look like they're not gonna work is because they're not gonna work. Like we filmed it 80 times and you know, missed the filming deadline, like all sorts of punishment. And, and so at, you know, as, it, as, the, as the suffering of that sort of faded into the background and the thing went viral, we were like, oh wow, you know, that was fun and you know, good band of nerds. We had all sorts of trending analysis in our news group. And, uh, but the part that we didn't expect was a bunch of parents and teachers started calling. And we were like, God, why? We're not educators. Like, why are teachers calling us? This doesn't make any sense. Uh, but it turned out that they were using this in their physics class. So their kids got excited and they were making their own Rube Goldberg machines and they were sending us the videos about it. And, uh, and so we were like, God, you know, that's pretty interesting. Like, this is not the, a normally a thing that you would think of as a teaching tool, but it was actually ending up being sort of useful in that, 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 that capacity. Uh, we, as a result of, of this, Madison Avenue started calling and saying, hey guys, like we want a viral video too. And, uh, and we were like, oh, sure, we'll just throw the viral switch. That'll be no problem. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, and of course, most of them also wanted a Rube Goldberg machine. And we were like, nope, out of that business. Thank you so much. Those things are terrible. We're never going to do it again. And, and said, no, no, no. I mean, even the guys from uh, you know, the ones that are all the bathroom humor, I forget their name, but they were, you know, we were like, jackass. Yeah, we were like, no, we're not going to do it for you guys. No. Uh, but, uh, but then Google called and we were like, gosh, all right, well, we do really love you guys and, uh, uh, and, and we'll do it on three conditions. We can use lasers, fire, and robots. And they were like, done. Uh, so if you're open to it, I've got that video here. Let me just yeah. see. Uh, so, so we did this uh, for their Google Science Fair. Oh, I realized maybe I'm not gonna have audio here. Uh, we did this for their Google Science Fair. Let's see if this works. Great. So it was all made of a bunch of uh, science fair projects. We got wind, magnets, baking soda and vinegar. That's actually a vacuum tube, so that feather fell at the same rate. So that's about 10,000 volts of electricity. <laughs> I love lasers. Yes. <laughs> 
Uh, so I don't know if you know this, but you can buy glow stick fluid by the gallon. And this is like a, uh, my co-founder's underneath this table with a huge syringe pumping all this glow stick fluid through that whole map. Um, but that, uh, so, so that glow stick fluid. Uh, <laughs> 